once seems harmless but is incredibly dangerous. Story 1. Garage Door Springs. I DIY a lot of things, but after reading about door springs, I'll let the professionals handle it. When I was buying my house, the inspector went through and gave me tips on how I could fix up some of the issues he found. Mostly stuff like, you can prevent mildew by lining the crawl space with more plastic. And, if you put more insulation here, it'll cut down on your electric bill. Then he got to the stiff garage door spring. Whatever you do, don't try to fix that on your own. Don't even think about it. It'll take your arm off. My dad lost part of his nose to one of them. Doctor said if he had been an inch closer, he would have probably died. We were in our living room watching TV and heard a very loud bang. We searched the garage and couldn't figure out what made the noise until the next morning when we opened the garage door. It folded like a Chinese fan. Turns out the spring broke and that's what made the noise. We weren't even in the garage when it happened. Scary stuff. Yes. My dad is the garage door guy and has told me horror stories about winding them. Garage doors in general are dangerous for kids and pets. I knew someone whose coat hood strings got caught on a garage door and she was hung with her airway restricted until her dad found her. Lived the rest of her life severely disabled. Story 2. Cat bites. Cat fangs puncture deep and trap bacteria deep within your tissue, leading to horrible infections. You might think one isn't serious because it's not bleeding much, but that just means the wound isn't flushing properly. If you get seriously bitten by a cat, it's very important to go to urgent care so they can properly disinfect the wound. I was bitten by my own cat and spent a week in the hospital. Cat was limping. Turns out this was due to a spinal fracture. I was trying to get him into a carry to take him to the vet and accidentally grabbed the broken leg, which I didn't know was broken at the time. He bit me between the knuckles of my index and middle finger. My wife took the cat to the vet and I went to the urgent care. They cleaned the wound and prescribed me some oral antibiotics within a few hours of the bite. Of course, this all happens on a Friday. Everything was basically fine on Friday, just a couple of cuts and a band-aid. Swelling was worse on Saturday, but basically still fine. But the Sunday morning, my hand looked like I had a softball growing out of my palm. I couldn't touch my thumb to any of my fingers. It was pouring out nasty-looking pus whenever I tried to make a fist, and I started to get red streaks and lines going up towards my elbow. My sister-in-law is a pediatrician, so I texted her a picture of it. She called me back almost immediately and told me to go to the emergency room the instant we hung up. I get to the UR, and after an hour or so, they admitted me to the hospital. I remained in the hospital for eight days. IV antibiotics for MRSA and staph every four hours to start. Once blood results came back, they determined I had just gotten the wrong type of antibiotic from urgent care, staph positive versus staph negative, or some such, so they were able to move me to changing the IV every eight hours. Ended up costing more than 12k in hospital bills for me and another 2.5k in surgery for the cat. This was a rescue cat that we got for free, shots and all. Story 3 Weirdly specific, but leaking hydraulic fluid from a small crack in a pressurized manifold. It doesn't shoot out like a gas would. Instead, it looks like droplets. But if you put your thumb over it, it shoots toxic hydraulic fluid into your bloodstream. This is the concept of injection injury. This can happen from any highly pressurized liquid like, say, a power washer. Basically, the high pressure shoots bacteria, toxins, foreign material deep into your tissues, which manifests in something much more serious than what appears to be a deep cut because the chance for serious infection, like amputation needing infection, is quite high. Usually opening up the entire wound and surgically cleaning all affected tissue out is proper treatment to prevent it from spreading. Story 4. Cleaning with Ammonia and Bleach Never clean up cat pee with bleach. When my dad taught me to clean the litter box, that was the first thing he said. It's a violation of the Geneva Convention and could kill the family. My roommate worked for a supermarket as a teenager. No one taught him about ammonia and chlorine, bleach, and he mixed both in his mop bucket. A thick fog started radiating from the bucket. He told his manager, and thankfully the store was evacuated immediately. It's wild that a clueless teen had the ingredients to make World War I-style poisonous gas just like that. Story 5. Lint. Too much lint in a dryer can cause a fire. Gotta clean that stuff out on the regular. You also need to clean the vent that goes from the back of your dryer through your wall or ceiling to the outside. Mine is at least 30 feet long and I cleaned it for the first time this month because my dryer was taking longer and longer to dry clothes. Turns out there was a clog that could have caused a fire and I pulled out a couple of trash bags full of lint. Our house was built in 2004, and by the look of it, this might have been the first time anyone cleaned the vent. Serious question, 
How TF do you clean a 30-foot tube? I've never cleaned mine and suddenly feel the need to clean it immediately. It's always been a rule in my family that you clean the lint trap after every use. Can never be too careful. I never realized that people don't do that. I was taught that it's part of a laundry routine. Open dryer, take clothes out, clean lint trap, close door. If you don't already, which apparently people don't, you should make a habit of it. Story 6. Putting your feet up on the dash while riding as a passenger in a moving car. You do not want to see post-accident photos of what happens when someone is in that posture in a surprise head-on collision. My buddy was riding with his brother several years back and had his feet up. They were at a gas station or something and some random dude came up and told him he should take his feet down because it's dangerous. He did. They got into a terrible accident only minutes later. They were both somehow unharmed. Scared to think what would have happened had that random stranger not spoken up. I'm going to look it up, but I'm guessing involuntary origami. The photos I saw, a teenage girl's hips both dislocated, and the femoral heads were forced out of her skin through that little fold where the thighs become butt. The injuries were incompatible with life, as they say. Story 7 Over-the-counter medicines. Just because you can get something without a prescription does not mean it's safe in all cases or in high doses. Traveling drilled that into me. Something common in my home country would be prescription only or even get banned in another, and vice versa. Usually it's because of concerns over excessive use or just whatever side effects being deemed unacceptable in one place or another makes you realize how much of the politics of a place come into play in terms of your safety. A former NFL player died today from liver disease caused by OTC pain medication. Tylenol causes 40% of liver failure deaths in the US. Story 8 there's that Peppa Pig episode about spiders teaching UK kids that they are nice and friendly, and that episode is banned in Australia. So there you go. Here's my answer. Peppa Pig episodes. Story 9. Eating raw or undercooked kidney beans can make you very sick or even kill you. It only takes like three undercooked kidney beans to ruin your day. Note that canned beans are safe as they have been cooked as part of a canning process. It's only the dried beans that you have to soak and cook properly. Story 10. Walking off the boardwalks at Yellowstone, they have several signs pressing that even though the ground may look normal in those areas, it could be really thin. I've seen people do it anyway. Looks safe, isn't safe. Last time I was at Yellowstone, I was with friends at Old Faithful. Some guy had walked out onto the outcropping which surrounds the geyser, which prompted quite the fit from a very unamused park ranger. My favorite Yellowstone story comes from a ranger. He had a family that thought bear spray was like mosquito spray, and they sprayed themselves. A few ambulances later, and they learned the difference. Story 11. This thread. It's making me not want to leave the house ever again. But there's so many things in your house that can kill you. Keep reading. Story 12. Pushing someone's face into cake as a joke. Saw some cakes have little wooden spikes inside to support the cake. Saw a post where a girl's face was gored by one of these. Not to mention, literally no one wants their face shoved into a cake. Plus, yeah, threw in a perfectly good, probably really expensive cake. Story 13. Climbing a ladder. It doesn't even have to be a big ladder. Even one of those two-step ladders are incredibly dangerous. One ill-placed step can change your entire life. If I'm not mistaken, the majority of workplace deaths are from falling off a ladder. I use them daily at work and am careful to the point where I've been made fun of for it. Like I give a shit, though. When I die, it's sure as hell not going to be at work, lol.